A big idea when we're making measurements is the accuracy and the precision of the measurement. Now both of those mean slightly different things, but they do mean how carefully the measurement is. So the first thing here is what is accuracy? We want to look at that. We want to see what is precision. And the idea is that when we're talking about measurements, we're talking about many, many measurements made on the same measuring device a lot of times. So this target right here, we can see that many, many people have uh, hit this target, and we can kind of talk about this whole group of holes and what that tells us. So multiple measurements is implied. When we're talking about accuracy, we're going to be looking at percent error. When we're talking about precision, we're going to be looking at significant figures. Now, if you just want to make a scientific measurement, then you want to write down all the numbers that you are certain of, plus one more that is kind of a judgment. So you can see here, here we're talking about centimeters, and so here's two centimeters, here's three centimeters, and there are lines that represent points of centimeters. So this line over here would be 2.1 centimeters. No, it's not. This one here would be 2.123, 2.3 centimeters. And this next one over, that would be 2.4 centimeters. So this red line, this red box we're measuring, looks like it's somewhere between 2.3 and 2.4. So if we were going to write down all the numbers you're certain of, you know it's 2.3. But to be really scientific, we ought to go just a little, push it a little bit farther and kind of judge it. To me, it looks like it's maybe just a slight, less than halfway across. So I'd to say 2.34, and we'll definitely put units on that. So the measurement for this length of this little red thing would be 2.34 centimeters. So those are all the numbers we're sure of, plus one more that is kind of a judgment. Now, somebody else came along and looked at that exact same ruler and that exact same red piece of whatever, uh, they might say that that's 2.35 centimeters, and that would be fine. We have the numbers we're sure of, and then one more, that's a judgment, and that judgment is going to be different for different people. So we look at this pencil here, starting way over here at zero, and we can see it's ending up between 4.7 and 4.8. So again, somebody might write that as 4.72 centimeters or 4.73 centimeters. There is some uncertainty built into every measurement just because of the measuring device and the people using it. So we expect that if more people came up and measured the same pen with the same ruler, they wouldn't get exactly the same answer, and we expect that for measurements. Now, Length is not the only thing we might measure. We might measure mass. And if we do that, we would use a balance. And you can see, I think that this says 18.87 grams. And even in this case, even though it's a digital readout, there will be some uncertainty. So if we actually do this, just slight air movement in the, in the room might make that say 18.88, 18.87, 18.86. So again, we're sure of the 18.8, but that last digit is probably going to vary from time to time. Or if somebody were to take that measuring the um, powder off of the balance and put it back on again, it might read slightly, slightly different, but definitely 18.8. .8. So all the numbers you're sure of plus one more. Over here, when we're talking about this volume, okay, liquid tends to creep up the side because it actually is attracted more to the glass than it is to itself. So there's a little scoop in each of these, and that's called the meniscus. And we always read at the bottom of the meniscus, so everybody reads the same. So we can see here's 4, here's 5, there's a line here for 4.9, 4.8. So reading at the bottom of the meniscus, I'd say this is somewhere like 4.8 and to me it looks again a little bit more than half, so 4.86 and I'm sure that this is milliliters. So the volume of this liquid here would be 4.86 milliliters. And notice we're going 4 and 5, you know, be careful when you read those. Now accuracy is talking about how close you are to the accepted value. So um, if we are talking about something like a, a glass measuring device, 
you know, then we pretty much, you know, are trusting that these numbers that are written on there have been drawn on in the correct place. If we're talking about a balance, however, they do tend to change, so we usually take a small weight and uh, put it on the balance, and we can calibrate to make sure that we are getting the correct readings. So we want to make sure that we have accurate amounts. The precision is how close the measurements are to each other. So now we're talking about multiple measurements. So we're saying that, you know, for accuracy, that it pretty much is accepted that uh, if you want to be accurate, you want to try to get right in the center of this target. So if somebody is hitting right here at the center of the target, then they are very accurate. If this was all the same person, we would say, well, even though they may be accurate that one time, other times they're all over the place. So their precision wouldn't be so great. So here we have a little kind of a, a graphic that helps us you know, put this all together. So over here, this is somebody who is very accurate because they're there at the bullseye. And they're also very precise because they're very consistent. So another word for precision would be consistency. So they're very consistent, you know, getting measurements very close to each other uh, and all in the right place. Now right below this here is with somebody here who is precise because they are very consistent. They keep hitting the same place, but that's the wrong place. So when they shoot, somehow they kind of go down a little bit, down into the left. So these are very precise, but not very accurate. Here's somebody who's all over the place. And if you look at all the different uh, darts, that they sort of circle, they sort of, you know, even out, if you kind of do it, way over here. So even though um, we have a, a variety of, of shots, we can see that they do not center on the bullseye, so we're going to say it's not very accurate and definitely not precise because they're not clustered close together. Now this one over here in the upper left, this is somebody that if we take and look at all the different values, so here's a value and here's a value, here's a value, here's a value, here's a value, and we kind of average them as a group, you can start to see that they sort of end up being kind of centered around the, the bullseye. And so we would say that as a group, these are accurate, but since they're not very consistent, we would say that they're, they're low precision. So this is a situation that would be accurate but not very precise. This one is accurate and precise. This one is precise but not very accurate. And this one here is uh, not accurate or precise. Now, we want to quantify accuracy. Then we need to go to percent error. And so let's say that we had a, a, uh, something we were trying to measure. And what we were trying to measure um, had an actual value of 4.53 grams. And we got something more like 4.50 grams. So we want to subtract those two because we're going to see how far are we off. We're going to divide by what it's supposed to be, 4.53 grams. So we want to find out how far are we off divided by um, how much it's supposed to be. And then we'll take that whole thing, multiply by 100, because that will give us a percent. If we work this one out, it turns out that this comes out to be about 0.66%. So we're not very far off. In fact, we're less than 1% error here, and that's pretty good. So accuracy, you would quantify that with percent error. If you want to do precision, however, then we are talking about something called significant figures. Significant figures goes back to the idea of making measurements and said if we were to make more and more measurements, you know, the same measure the same object over and over, we would be getting uh, more or less the same measurements. And we want to get all the ones that we're sure of plus one more that we're not quite sure of. So in this case, the upper right here was a 35.722. We would say that's five significant figures. And if we were to um, have somebody else come and measure the same device, they might get 35.73 or 35.7, I'm sorry, 35.723 or 35.721. It might vary in this last place, but we'd expect this part all to stay the same. So five significant figures. For this one, 
for this object, okay, it only has three significant figures. This um, balance only measures to the tenths place. So even if we took that same object and measured on here, uh, we would only get three significant figures. And that means that if people made multiple measurements on this same measuring device with only the same object, we would expect to get values like 35.8 and 35.6. They would only agree for the first two digits. So significant figures are all the digits that we're absolutely sure of, plus the first digit where it starts to vary, first digit uncertainty. And what this means for us really is that a balance like this that goes to the tenths place, you could probably get that for about $90.00. Okay, but this one here that goes three significant figure or three you know three digits at the decimal place, you're probably talking more like nine hundred dollars. So you know to get more precision, it's definitely more money. So precision, we do that with significant figures. Okay, uh, accuracy, we do that with percent errors. And finally, we might want to go one more step with this and say that you know how much would it vary? So we might say plus or minus in this case point one grams because we would expect you know this value here to vary by one for this one here it would be plus or minus point zero zero one grams and that's you know much more precise so significant figures or plus or minus uncertainties to show how carefully the precision is for a measurement and that's all